Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Carmen Bryant, Psychological Health Consultants and Services. Those of you that are viewing from YouTube, those of you that are viewing from Facebook, this is my program, which is called Redefining Yourself. It is a program I develop for those women that are in, that are thinking about leaving, that need more information, and who have left or are recovering from domestic violence. And my particular topic of interest is narcissist abuse recovery. So it's overcoming narcissist abuse. Um, even though this program is developed with women in mind, um, as you have seen, if you're reading the comments on YouTube, uh, we have men that have been through the exact same thing women have been through, just in a different dynamic, different way. Uh, when I say different way, meaning that you're dealing with the males for the females and you're dealing with the females for the males. And so the way that the females conduct themselves a lot of times is just a little different than the way that the males conduct themselves because women will use seduction. They'll use, you know, the, their, their feminine roles, you know. But if you look at the characteristics of those that have narcissistic personality disorder, their characteristics are all similar. Uh, different people, different nationalities, different races, background, and religious belief system. But the narcissistic personality disorder all has the same feature. If you look into the DSM, which is the, the, the book that we use, let me grab it for you. This is the manual that is used by the clinician. It is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Health Disorders. I had to read it backwards. And this is the DSM-5, which is the new edition. Uh, there was four, there was three, but this is the one that we use. And so if you look at the characteristics of the narcissist and those that may have narcissistic personality disorder and sociopath and psychopath um, uh, pathology or that um, diagnosis, you'll see that these features are all the same in those that have the disorder. Uh, and so I have been looking and, and I try to answer and, and reply to comments that are on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for interacting with me, uh, making your comments from your point of view. You know, we want to make sure that we don't want to uh, uh, discriminate against anyone or, um, you know, your experience is your experience. Your questions are your ex uh, questions. You know, your belief systems are your belief system. And so I do try to bring the information from a clinical perspective. Uh, but whatever question that you have, you ask the question. And I'll answer it to the best of my knowledge. I do not uh, come on YouTube under the assumption that we all have the same belief system, uh, but I do try to provide you with information because I am a uh, clinician. I am uh, a certified trauma, a certified clinical trauma professional and a life coach. And so I do try to provide information to you based on my knowledge, my experience, my experience with uh, clients. And I have a lot of people that are in or coming out of, or I've come out of relationships with men. Most of them are women that I deal with uh, who have been uh, abused. And now they are discovering that the people that abused them were narcissists or even discovering that they come from family um, who have family members, uh, mothers and fathers, or even uh, sisters, brothers, aunts, whoever, uh, their caregivers may have been uh, or are uh, narcissists. And so today I just want to come on really quick. If you have not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It is Dr. Carmen Bryant overcoming narcissist abuse so you'll see me in a white shirt like this um, but it is uh, Carmen Bryant D-R-C-A-R-M-E-N-B-R-Y-A-N-T overcoming narcissist abuse and uh, subscribe to the channel hit the bell so you'll know whenever I come on live I like to cut usually I cut, try to come in between Saturday and Sunday evening I know some of you on the East Coast so it's kind of late when I when I come in but I'm always so honored when you guys come in and talk to me and give me your experiences and ask questions uh, that's what I'm here for a lot of you have been through and have experienced narcissist abuse and so you have your you know it's a community of people that are supporting each other especially the women that are supporting each other so you know that you're not the only one that's been through this your pain serves as a healing point for someone else uh, some place where a person can say I'm not the only one that went through and I knew I wasn't crazy no you are not crazy and yes it is real Domestic violence is real, and many people live in shame and, and uh, live in, in fear. And as you have been reading, hopefully you guys have been reading the comments, a lot of the men have said that, you know, one of the biggest thing is living in shame, especially as a man, because as most people do not believe that a man can be abused. Yes, a man can be abused. They may be abused a little different than a female uh, or sometimes a little similar. You know, when a woman uh, uh, hits or, or abuses physically, most people are not, you know, most people don't believe that a woman can do that. Yes, they can. And they can be very, very vicious when it comes to um, psychological abuse 
they do a lot of things uh you know and of course when you do it when when a man does it you know it is also very different but it's still the same the same category uh domestic violence and so today i just wanted to come on really quick and also if you have not you know if it's easier for you to come on facebook i have a professional facebook page which is psychological health consultants and services usually when i go live i go live on both the um professional uh, Facebook page and the YouTube channel. Um, I just want you to know though, however, um, if I do travel, or not if, but when I do travel, sometimes I can't come on both channels at the same time, and I will probably go over to the YouTube channel for you guys to join me whenever I travel so that you can travel along with me. I'm not gonna tell you all the details of where I'm going or where I'm at, just don't want you to pop up on me, you know, but at the same time, uh, whenever I travel uh, and I, I bring you on live, let you see you know, how I um, learn to love myself. And when I say learn to love myself, learn to take myself out to eat, learn to go to the movies by myself, I don't have a problem being with myself. You have to learn to like yourself. If you don't like yourself, then of course you don't wanna be with yourself. You know, you're the first person, you have to like yourself. If you don't like yourself, why would you think anybody else will like you? So you have to love and like yourself first. Okay, so let's go to, you know, the title is The Narcissist. My relationship was not real so many of you have discovered and the hardest thing to discover you know even when women come into my office is when they begin to you know clinicians listen to symptoms symptoms point to a deeper issue uh, when you go to a medical doctor you know if you have a pain in a certain place in your body you know they're in their mind they're analyzing it could be this could be that could be this could be that so what they do is, is they run tests maybe do cat scans or mris to determine what the problem could be. Uh, same with the clinician. We listen and, and there's symptoms, meaning that you may come in with a stomach ache, you may throwing up, vomiting, headache, whatever. Those are symptoms to a problem. <clears throat> in the mental health field, you come in, your behavior, depression, whatever, those are symptoms to a problem. And so dealing with a relationship, a, a narcissistic relationship, um, people normally come in and they're giving me information which is letting me know that there's symptoms. And the more they talk, because I teach on this all the time, the more they talk, the more I begin to realize, not, not everyone, the more I begin to realize that they're probably dealing with a individual that has narcissistic personality disorder. Well, if you're dealing with a person or if you're in a relationship with a person with narcissistic personality disorder, they have very similar symptoms. They have very similar behaviors. And so when I begin to present that to them, you know, uh, and and what I, I'm very straightforward. So I'm like, it sounds like you are in a domestic violent relationship. A lot of people, what I found out, because I deal with this on a daily basis, so I didn't realize that some people do not know the definition of, and I said this in another video, some people do not know what the definition of domestic violence is. Domestic violence is a matter of power and control. Everyone that's in a domestic violent relationship is not being physically abused. Um, they could be psychologically abused, they could be financially abused, uh, ec you know, economically abused, uh, medically abused. You know, there are different versions or different parts that play into domestic violence. Uh, and so usually I will bring up the fact that it sounds like you are in a domestic violent relationship. And what I'll begin to do is, does the individual do this? Do they do that? Do they do this? Do they do that? Normally, I don't come straight forward and say, I think you're in a relationship with a narcissist because nine times out of 10, if you've been in a relationship with a person for a very, very long time, your mind is trying to figure out how to make this right. What can I do to fix this problem? What can I do? Because normally a narcissist will always make you feel like you're the one with the problem. They make, you know, not normally, all the time. They always make you seem like you're the problem. You need to go to therapy. You need to get help. Uh, well, the reason why they say that is because they're not going to change. They have no desire to change. You need to change and you need to become more compliant. I mean, there's only so much compliance you can do. But when you begin to start questioning, you know, what is going on? Maybe I have a problem. They come in. Normally, I just don't point out and say, you're with a narcissist. I don't do that. That'll run people away. So what I'll do is, is I'll start picking out behaviors. Do they do this? Do they do this? Do you normally feel like this? Do you also do this? Do you do this? Because when a person comes to a realization, oh my gosh, it's almost like you're in my house. I've heard them say that many times. Oh my gosh, it's almost like, do you know him? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, you know, well, how do you know so much? And, and then I may pick out other things and talk, and do you feel like this, and yes. And they'll open up, and they'll start describing it. When then I introduce, you know, have you ever heard of narcissism? 
they may say, oh yeah, I've heard of that before and I've been doing a little research on it, but I don't think he or she fits that. There's normally he, no, uh, I don't think he fits that category. So you have to remember that when you've been with a person for so long, a lot of times reality is something that most people don't want to accept. A lot of times when people come in and they say, I believe my husband is cheating or my wife is cheating. When they start, nine times out of 10, you've already had the check in your heart. You've already had the red flag. You have that gut instinct, that gut feeling. And when you come and you say, I believe that this person is having an affair. Well, tell me why you think that. Because this, 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 they've changed the way they dress, they do this, and this is what they did when they were doing it. So normally you have your own answers. You already know the answers, you just want someone else to give you that answer. And so I normally say, you're telling me this information, but you're coming in and you already know what the situation is. What do you think? And normally they'll say, I believe that they're having an affair. Or some people that are still in denial will say, well, I just don't believe it, but you just told me all the symptoms. If I said it to you, what would you think? Well, likewise, when you're dealing with a person that's in a relationship with a narcissist, you begin, they already know because they may have researched, some some don't, uh, may have researched it and, and they're headed in that direction. When I begin to bring it out and say, this is what it sounds like, or go watch my videos and then tell me what you think, a lot of times what I notice is, is when, they, when, when people first discover that there's a possibility they're in a relationship with a narcissist, they're in uh, shock, it's the grief process, they're in shock and denial. Denial. They will argue me down. I'm telling you, they will argue with me and justify why they don't believe that that person is a narcissist. And usually I have to I let them argue, you know, well, if you know, then you tell me. I don't think it's that. Then they try to, uh, and this is how the narcissist has kind of groomed them. And, and what they'll do is, is, is say, for example, um, well, no, I think he's just having a hard time, or I think he's just going through, you know, this and that and this, and he did come from a bad family, and, and did come from abuse, and I think this is just behavior. But do you see how a person is trying to justify? It's not that you're trying to justify and excuse the behavior. What you're doing is trying to, uh, to decrease the anxiety that you have where you probably know that's what you're dealing with. As I said before, a character trait, you know, when you have specific character traits, I'm a very loud individual, and I come from a loud family. I am the culprit in my family. I'm loud, I laugh loud. I, I love being around people and I like to be loud. I talk loud, I laugh loud, I'm just loud. And then I was in the military, that cultivated it even more. Just loud, I'm loud, talk loud, give commands loud. Loud, it, it just cultivate, just loud. Uh, I'm a loud individual, that's me, that's my personality. I love to laugh, I love to see people laugh, I like to crack jokes, I love to see people smile. That's my biggest thing, I love to see people smile. Even in counseling, I take the opportunity to make people smile, I make you laugh, I'll take a bad situation, I'll make you look at it different ways, and then I'll try to bring a smile on your face. That's my personality, that's just how I am. Anyone that meets me know that's just me, I'm a humorous person. Okay, that's my character trait, that's just how I am. Um, now, a narcissist, that is their character trait, that is how they are. They like empathy. They have this magical thinking. Um, they have this grandiose way of thinking. They um, they look at themselves, and I did a God and Pharaoh uh, one. I did a video in reference to their, their your personal gods. Their whole thing is to take over your life and you depend on them solely. You worship the ground that they walk on. You do everything you know that, that, that they want. So it's not a real relationship. When you have, when you met your partner, husband, wife, you know, whoever, you have to remember, and I did The Great Illusionist, you go back and watch The Great Illusionist, they presented themselves the what to what you needed at that time. You had holes and you had some deficiencies or you had some hurts and pains, so they came in like the knight in shining armor or the damsel in shining armor, whatever he or she was, and they came in to fill those voids for you. It was never realistic, it was just to get you. There was something that's called supply and demand. A narcissist is always looking for supply and the demand is out there. And there's something about you that was able to provide that individual with fuel from your supply. Now, there are different types and, and they may, and trust me, by the time a narcissist connects with you, they've already been studying you, they've already been watching you, they watch your language, they watch, they, they may look at your Facebook page, they see what you're interested in, if you're interested in music, if you're interested in art, education, nursing field, medical field, church, whatever. Uh, whatever it is, they will conform to that so they can speak your language. And what they do is they mirror you. 
most people are attracted to people that are very similar to themselves. And so they will mirror you. They will even mirror your gestures, mirror your words. And this is something that we learn in therapy as well, to mirror the individual because it draws them in, make them feel safe. You feel safe with yourself, you know, and so you mirror the individual to make them feel safe, to build rapport with them. And this is all for the purpose of therapeutic, uh, is therapeutic and is building rapport with the individual. Well, the narcissist does that to mirror you, to mimic you, and to make you feel like that is your soulmate because you guys have so much in common and you don't. It is a great illusion to draw you in to get your supply. Now we can simplify this and let's say that you have, okay, let's just say you're a millionaire. We're all millionaires you're a millionaire or just say you have a lot of money and that narcissist is is already says that narcissist is, is a somatic uh, somatic let's just use somatic just simplify and just say somatic so a somatic uh, narcissist is one that's into material things into their looks into sex uh, you know Everything is about their appearance and how they appear before people. And of course, you know, a lot of times the narcissists usually are in debt because they're constantly trying to impress people around them and, and get attention. That is their fuel. And so they may be with someone or and looking for a new supply. So they may find a supply that has more money because they have probably depleted the last supply of all their supply. And so the fuel from that last supply, because now that every relationship that that narcissist gets into is just total destruction and chaos, you know, unless you pull out in time. But let's say that uh, that narcissist has depleted the retirement plan, has depleted the money, has depleted maybe an inheritance that uh, they, that the individual has received, has depleted all the finances. And now that person is in like financial ruins and debt, uh, you know, houses is going into foreclosure cars are about to be repossessed you know whatever the situation may be and they have honed in into another supply that has finances but has more finances than the last one did they're honed into that individual and their whole goal is to get their hands on that money and so what they have to do is is they have to elevate themselves and woo you almost hypnotize you and become everything, especially if they find that you're kind of weak. And when I say weak, meaning that emotionally you may be weak, emotionally you may be hurt, because people can look very strong but be very weak on the inside. Not emotionally healed, uh, still hurting from whatever trauma, but they get into a conversation with you to find out what your weaknesses are. And then what they do is they fill those gaps. They cause you, they're in debt, they cause you to fall in love with them, they'll buy you, they'll buy things for you, knowing they're putting themselves in debt. They'll use the other supplies, finances, to take you on trips to buy you stuff to pay your bills to take you out to eat to wine you and dine you so you're looking at it because the way that they present you is like I don't want your stuff I have my own stuff and I really would like to just wine and dine you to make you feel special but their whole goal is get their hands on your money and so they'll wine you and dine you and and purchase this and purchase that and and make you feel so good about yourself where you'll begin to say wow this is the first time I've met a person or met someone that's not after my money. Red flag. Um, but they're already looking at your money. And so now you and them have connected. And there's little things they'll start doing to get you to get a little money because all that stuff that they did, they never did it uh, because they wanted to do it for you. They did it to obligate you. So they're, they're, everything that they do has a reason and a purpose behind it. Everything has an arterial motive. They did it, number one, to pull you in, to make you think a certain way. Number two, they did it so they can obligate you, to make you feel obligated to do for them. But what they'll start doing is requesting things that is more expensive than what they did for you. And you'll find yourself giving and giving and doing this, but you feel so good because this person has made you feel pretty. Or let's, let's say you have a, a lady, you know, some of you guys are um, on Facebook and you, you're really into yourself. And so it's all about wearing the bikinis and wearing this and showing this and popping it and dropping it and, and whatever you're doing on Facebook. Well, they know that's your weakness. They know that you're vain or they know that you may feel insecure about yourself so you have to go overboard with your appearances. So the way that they will come in, they'll come in at you complimenting your beauty, telling you how beautiful you are, telling and this is what you feel good about that. Oh my gosh, she thinks I'm, 
or uh, the narcissist may present themselves, you know, and, and the younger generation or even some older generation. They have this kind of car, they live in this kind of house, you know, I can do this for you. And women are looking like, oh my gosh, he has everything that I've ever wanted. He does this, he dresses like this, he smells like this. This is everything that I've ever wanted. And they know, they watch your behavior, they watch your language, and they hook you in. And some of you are saying, but I didn't have anything. He had everything, but you had supply. There was some supply that you had that he needed fuel. You'd be a beautiful woman, he needed eye candy. Uh, you have, you may be a good homemaker. Uh, you may be a businesswoman. You may have money. You may, you know, you fell head over heels and there's nothing no one can ever do to argue. Uh, uh, you will fight for this individual. You know, whatever supply that you supplied for him. That is what they're looking for. And once they've depleted you, the relationship is over and they go seek other supply. So the relationship was never real. The hardest part for most people is to have to come to terms with the fact I've invested 15, 20, 30 years into this relationship. I had children, we sent children to college, we did this, we did that, we invested this. And you mean to tell me that the relationship was never real? It was never real. You supplied uh, that that you fueled that that narcissist for the longest. You made them look good, and it's a hard thing to have to go back and say, "I just don't believe that," because no one's going to stay in a relationship that long, and and the relationship is not real. No, because you're not looking at it from their point of view. Their point of view is um, uh, they have no empathy, and they have no real connection with people. They don't connect with people the same way that we connect with people, and so you're looking at it from your empathetic emotional mind they don't look at anything from their empathetic and emotional mind you see and so what ends up happening is is that you are so wounded and so hurt because you can't believe that your entire relationship was a facade excuse me you can't believe that your entire relationship was a lie because how can it be that easy for you to leave this relationship and jump into a new relationship and get married after two weeks? Or how is it that you can jump right into a new relationship as if we never had a relationship whatsoever? How is it that you can jump into a new relationship or just leave me and my children or leave me and, and leave me with all the debt or leave me and I helped build you to get you to this point and I was, do you remember Wait Next Hell? You know, how could you leave me when I stayed up late at night with you to help you build your business and make you this and gave you this and make sure you had this? They were a narcissist. That's the hardest part for most people. That is the most painful part for most people is to come to the realization that nothing about the relationship was real. I looked up this term. I looked up the term supply and demand. I know what supply and demand means, but I wanted to read this to you. Supply and demand, the definition of it, and this is off of Merriam-Webster, and it says the amount of goods and services that are available for people to buy compared to the amount of goods and services that people want. So if you have a high demand for product, there should be a high supply for that product so that you can sell these products and you have a set price and you sell them these products because there's a high demand so you can keep producing, producing. What sometimes what happens in businesses and microeconomics or economics, uh, it says that if less of the product than the public wants is produced, the law of supply and demand says the more can be charged for that product. So think about it. The more people want it, and the less I offer the product, the more you're willing to pay for that product. And that works for both the narcissist and the person and the, and the supply. If you have the supply and the narcissist puts the demand on that supply, the more supply you're trying to produce for that narcissist to keep that, keep, they're demanding something from you and the more supply you're trying to produce for that, for that narcissist. And in turn, the narcissist is also supplying you with something that you desperately want. Attention, love, affection, whatever they're supplying to you. Once most people come to a realization that, wait a minute, I think I'm being used, and you begin to ask questions, if you change anything about yourself because it's easy to manipulate you and it's easy to maintain control of you because you never ask any questions, you, you let them do what they want to do, and you start becoming to a realization whether you've been watching videos or you just know something is wrong, and you begin to ask questions like, what are you doing with the money every month? You know, I've entrusted you with my bank account. What are you doing with the money every month? Wait a minute. Okay, on the taxes, I looked at the tax paperwork. Why do you say this? You know, give me an explanation. Why do you say this? Or wait a minute, we had this amount of money in there. What are you doing with the money? Where are the receipts? What are you spending it on? 
See, you're beginning to ask questions that holds them accountable. And you're breaking up that illusion, that facade. They could be using that money to woo in a new supply. Or they're using that money frivolously, frivolously uh, and, and um, without accountability to make themselves look good. Spend it on their friends, to pull in flying monkeys, uh, new supply. You know, you're feeding and dining them and you don't even know that you're doing it. Now you're holding them accountable, so now you're putting pressure on them to answer to you. Well, that lets them know that they have lost a certain amount of control. Wait a minute, how dare you question me? No, 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 this is a relationship. I'm supposed to question you. I'm supposed to ask you questions. See, then they begin to realize that they're losing their grip on you. Most of the time when they, well, when they get into a relationship with you, you easily just throw them supply and they take it. There's a demand and they continue to take it. When you begin to decrease that supply and put uh, worth on it and you begin to decrease that, it requires them to pay a higher price to maintain that supply. And they're not willing to do that. They're not willing to pay a higher price, like accountability, like responsibility. They're not willing to, because it was too easy, because you would just give them the supply at whatever price you set. And you probably price yourself low. You sold yourself out low. You sold yourself out. You sold yourself for you, you cheap. And what ends up happening is, is they're not willing to pay the price. And so they'll go look for another supply where they can get more supply, more fuel for cheap. That's what they do. You've got to put some value on yourself. You have to put value on yourself. I always tell people, you know, Michael Jordan, his, his uh, tennis shoes, beautiful tennis shoes. He has some beautiful tennis shoes, but you're paying for the name. You know, it's quality shoes, but you're paying for the name. You know, name brands, you know, these designers, these beautiful, I love Chanel. Chanel, I like the emblem, the, the Chanel emblem. I think it's so pretty, but you're going to pay a price for it. You're paying for the name. Coco Chanel, come on, Coco Chanel. Uh, designer perfume I love her perfume uh, but you're gonna pay for the for the name you're paying for it because they understand the value of their product when have you ever seen and I don't see commercials for Maybach I don't see commercials for a Rolls Royce and if you go onto a Rolls Royce dealership they're even dressed differently than the average um, car dealership have you noticed that then on top of that when you go you, you probably have researched the product because you know the worth of their vehicles. You're not going to negotiate them on their vehicles unless you're coming in to pay, you know, cash. Hey, I know this is a, a $250,000 or $500,000 car. I'll give you $450,000 cash if you give me this one, this one, this one. Well, what kind of car are you interested in, Mama, sir? You know, I like the Phantom. What, what's the, um, what's the, you know, what's the latest model you have out? When does this model come out? This is, so you're coming and you know about the product and you know the worth of that product. You know, a Maybach or a, 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 um, a, um, what did I just say? The Phantom? So, but you know the worth, they know the worth of their product. So if you can't negotiate with them and they know the price and the value and and what went into creating that vehicle that vehicle and they come there's some quirks that come with it too you know lifetime this and lifetime that you know why can't we put value on ourselves some of you ladies are selling yourself short some of you ladies are jumping into relationships entirely too quick and some of you are hurting deeply hurting at the fact you've just discovered that you've been with a narcissist all this time and that they never ever ever valued the relationship like you did you went into even men you went into the relationship in hopes that you know you, you with big hopes and, and and hopes for the future and hopes for the relationship and you find out that they never had the same desires that you did and that the relationship was a facade and it was easy after 20 30 years they were able to go and move on to a relationship just like that and the thing that I always tell everybody you know and the hardest part to, to realize is the fact you are assuming that they're doing better with the new supply no they're doing the same thing they did with you they're going at a different level because they have something else to supply them with but they went into another relationship but they haven't changed they're not gonna change and it's only a matter of time where the new supply begins to pick up now it'll be her or his choice to make a decision whether to leave that relationship but they're gonna be just like you depleted hurt uh, the reality you know and some some people will stay no I'm gonna make this work I'm, I'm believing that the person is gonna change people don't change unless they want to change and when you have a personality disorder, disorder like this you know that's a permanent personality trait that won't change and I know um, I had a young lady ask you know so you're telling me that this is um, impossible for God to do God to do anything if you want him to 
but you have to want them to change you. You have to want to change yourself. And if you don't want to change, nothing is going to change nothing. And most narcissists don't want to change. The thing about a narcissist is they think they are a god. So how are they going to go and go to a god if they think they're a god? That's the problem. And they don't see anything wrong with themselves. There's everything wrong with everyone else because everyone else is out to get them because of how great they are, how brilliant they are, how smart they are. Everyone is jealous over them. So why should I change? Because you guys have a problem and most of you guys need help. That's how a narcissist thinks. And so most of you, you gotten into a relationship with a narcissist, you found out that it was never real. That's the painful part. And I'm sorry that you guys had to go through this, but I'm telling you, you can recover from this. You can learn from this. You can teach other people. There are other people on here that are hurting just like you're hurting and they have learned. They're learning and everybody is a different phase of recovery at a different phase of realization, a different phase of their grief and loss process, but it is possible to recover from it. You have to want to recover from it and you have to want to walk away and leave it alone. There is no closure with a narcissist. They will not allow you closure. They don't mind you suffering. They, they get a thrill and fuel out of you suffering. They love to see you hurt. And so you have to come to your own closure and your own healing when dealing with or having dealt with a narcissist. Hopefully this has helped you guys today. You know, leave some comments. Let me know what you think. You know, thank you guys for all the comments. If you have not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It is Dr. Carmen Bryant, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Please send me emails if you want to. Dr. Carmen Bryant, D-R-C-A-R-M-E-N-B-R-Y-A-N-T at Outlook.com. Send me emails. Let me know your story. You know, give me topics that you'd like me to talk about, and I'll be more than happy to talk about those topics. If you have not, you can also join my Facebook page. It is Psychological Health Consultants and Services. And for both of them, you like it, and then also hit the bell on the YouTube channel so you can see whenever I come on live. And usually I come on live on the professional Facebook page and YouTube, and then I open it up for questions if you want to talk to me. We usually chit-chat in the evening before we start our week and thank you guys so much for participating with me and talking to me thank you guys for watching and supporting me and thank you all the new followers thank you guys so much for following me thank you that you find something that I say relevant to your situation I hope that you guys will heal I hope that you're learning something I hope that you're adding to your data bank learning and learning and moving forward because someone needs to hear your story somebody needs to know that they're not the only one if you have not already please share these videos because you never know who's in a narcissistic relationship you never know who's hurting, who has come out of it. And uh, people are hurting out there, you guys. People are hurting. Some of the emails that I get, people are really hurting. They cannot believe that another human being can treat a human being like that. Well, we look at psychopaths and sociopaths on our television, which is called anti-personality disorder. People that eat people, people that kill children, uh, people that abuse and rape children. And we look at them and look at them, these horrific monsters. Well, narcissists is on the same level as they are. And some narcissists also have the psychopath and sociopath uh, diagnosis, um, which is, like I said, is the anti-personality disorder. It was is put into one uh, for the new DSM-5. But some of them also have um, uh, anti-social uh, anti -social personality disorder to include other things like post-traumatic stress, major depressive disorder, uh, 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 you know, anxiety, you know, all the other things that um, people have, they have too. Medication cannot fix a personality disorder. All it would do is um, manage the symptoms, but their personality does not change. Now you just have a calm abuser. You know, now you have a person that's calm and chemically balanced in their brain, their mood is calm, but they never change. They're angry, they're vindictive, you know, it's all about me. Everything that they do, everything that they do, everything that they plan is all about themselves. It has nothing to do with you. They're very selfish individuals and they cannot connect with people. They do not have empathy. And so hopefully this has helped. Thank you guys for tuning in. Please leave your comments, please email me, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Leave some comments. Let me know what topic you'd like me to talk about. Hey, thank you guys for tuning in. And as my friend always says, go and be great.